Hello Flickering Myth family and all you Marvel fans out there. My name is EJ and welcome to our channel. If you're not subscribed, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, comment down below what you think of this video and give me a thumbs up. And now that we got that out of the way, we are here to talk about a new MCU film. Though it is a bit different for an MCU film because it's R-rated. It is homaging a different universe. Yes, we are talking about Deadpool and Wolverine. So for this review, I am going to keep things spoiler free. I will mention cameos, but the only times I'm going to mention things are, you know, people that have been announced beforehand. If you've seen them in a trailer, if there was a press release on Deadline or Hollywood Reporter or on our own channel, Flickering Myth, we're going to be talking about those people. But there's some real surprises I want you guys to go into. But I have to say, I liked the movie. I don't know if I went in with lowered expectations. I'm pretty hit or miss on the Deadpool films. I hate the first Deadpool movie. Shocking, I know. But I love the second Deadpool movie. It was exactly what I thought the first one should have been. Those are my feelings on the first two. But now we're at Deadpool and Wolverine. The third Deadpool movie, the latest MCU movie, the, well, like, I, honestly, the first one in a while, it seems. And how do they fare? What was it like? It is an explosive, R-rated, laugh-a-minute kind of movie. Maybe too many jokes, and we'll talk about the, the comedy in, a, in the next section with the good, the bad, and the cameos as we break all of that down. But overall, it is a fun movie. It's, it's funny. I, I don't know what else really to say. I, I enjoyed the gags. I thought the team-up was interesting. I have some issues with one half of the team-up, but for the most part, I thought it was fine. I, I enjoyed myself. I enjoyed myself more than I thought I would. The homages to the Fox X-Men universe, the Fox Marvel universe, to be in, you know, to be honest, there's a, there's a lot more here that they talk about. So yeah, I love that kind of stuff. I thought it was funny. I do think the movie has some faults that kind of weigh it down from being anything higher than just a okay fun movie it just it almost was there but you know hey welcome to the mcu you're gonna have some typical problems that marvel movies have been having so you know it's it's funny as much as deadpool wanted to avoid falling into the traps of the typical marvel stuff he he can homage it he can you know be self-aware about all of it but you still fall into some traps laid by kevin feige and his team so yeah overall i thought deadpool and wolverine was fine i had a good time but for this video i really want to dive into nitty-gritty details that i don't think most people would talk about i want to talk about the good of course so many people are going to praise it but there's some things i want to talk about the bad but i don't want to bash the movie it seems like this is going to be one of those movies that people either absolutely love or absolutely hate i'm going to be one of those middle people and then for our last section i want to talk about the cameos and the love letter of all of it like i said no spoilers i will mention some names that we've seen again in trailers and things like that but i want to keep this fun and fresh for you guys i think i went in with a somewhat lowered expectations with some ideas of some of the cameos i was blown away by the amount of fun and blood that was here and some of the cameos surprised me so i want you guys to have that same feeling all right enough of this intro let's get into the good of deadpool and wolverine one of the best things about this movie is the comedy and the jokes. Do I think that they throw every joke at the wall? For them to throw like 70 jokes at the wall in one minute, it feels like maybe 60 of them land. And those 10 clunkers are definitely going to not age well with repeat viewings. But for the most part, I thought it was funny. I laughed out loud of a lot of the meta jokes, a lot of the self-aware jokes, but actually jokes within the movie, within the characters that we have. It isn't just Deadpool having to break the fourth wall to be funny. He's just funny and general which helps a lot like i said there is a lot of jokes and some of them can be juvenile some of them can be really funny i think this movie has some of the best gay jokes i've ever seen in my entire life there are some things in this movie that i'm like wow we're, we said the word bottom in the right context in a marvel movie like deadpool coming in here definitely usher it in a new era of what we can talk about the jokes that we can crack the amount of oh my god moments we could have because wow this movie is also insanely bloody the violence is at a 11 i knew it was going to be bloody it's deadpool it's you know a marvel movie with some good action but whoa whoa they pass limits of things that i'm like you stabbed them there with that and how oh wow yeah they definitely go balls to the wall no pun intended with the violence of this movie there's some things that hinder the violence a little bit we'll talk about in the bad section but for the most part the jokes and the violence was you know that's deadpool that is if jokes and violence is the, the the deadpool calling card and those things worked i also like that this didn't feel like an mcu movie we thrust him into this universe but it doesn't fall into 
a lot of the MCU traps. One thing there is, it's pretty small scale. In a way, positive or maybe negative to some people, I almost wrote that this felt pointless. And I, and not that the movie felt pointless, but the story didn't feel like it was building towards anything larger, which for me, I didn't need that. I don't want to take the notes about Kang and the multiverse, but does that even matter? How are we leading up to Secret Wars? I did not really need all of that. There's maybe some nuggets of stuff that we can get into later on in the MCU with Deadpool, but for the most part, it just was an isolated story trying to close off a chapter of the Fox universe, trying to give Deadpool an introduction into the, you know, the mainstream. It, it, it works for the most part. I like that they weren't trying to do the most. If you are a fan of Loki season one, especially, there's a lot of Loki stuff, but for the most part, it's like common MCU knowledge. Like you can go in seeing maybe five or six major Marvel Studios movies and get a lot of the the Marvelness of this and that was helpful because again I like Marvel movies but I'm not sitting here watching every one of them every day I just sat and binged the Fox X-Men movies before this more than I binged you know Iron Man and Thor and all those movies they're definitely mentioned they're definitely in the universe Deadpool's gonna crack jokes about Marvel at large but I like that this movie was smaller scale scaled it back and said let's focus Focus on what we need to focus on and that helped it be good now let's jump into the bad because this movie does suffer from a few things that keep it from being a perfect superhero experience the first two things we're going to talk about in the bad section are things that you definitely expect to be in the bad section of our Marvel movie. Hey, Deadpool, you're the MCU. Here's what you're going to have to deal with. My goodness, the villains. I hate them. I hate them. Cassandra Nova is an interesting villain who has good moments. Uh, Emma Corrin, I believe their name is. Great. I mean, Emma's great. Cool. Awesome. I love you on the crown. I love all that. The villain is just kind of underwritten, which, you know, this villain's underwritten. There's another villain in this movie, a TVA agent, completely underwritten, just a boring nothing character. Matthew McFadden, I believe his name is. Yay, I'm glad you got a gig. You were kind of funny at times, but what a pointless thing. The TVA, you know, to me felt pointless. They are the, the time variant agency that we've met in the Loki film, or the Loki TV show. Yeah, if you, you know... Yay, you guys are here. That's kind of... The TVA is here only for the let's get Deadpool to travel. It just feels like every time we cut back to them, I was just like, give me something. Give me... I would rather watch, like, you know, Mega, Negasonic Teenage Warhead and Dopinder hang out more than I would rather watch anything TVA related in this movie. It's so dull, so dry. It just... Ugh. And the VFX. Wow. Sometimes, sometimes this movie looks god awful there's like a couple things that are very obviously cgi that i i don't think distract me as much but things like the cgi blood some of the backdrop some of the green screen that we see throughout the movie some of the like effects on main characters there's one time with wolverine just doesn't even feel like a real thing it's giving me like remember those two like bouncy rubbery people that were in blade 2 the matrix second movie they kind of gave me that level of cgi and i was just like ew brother ill like i just i, I just mm, i couldn't figure out why i think this movie is ugly and it goes down to cinematography but it's also the vfx i just think this movie doesn't have a a, a good sheen to it and i kind of miss when you know marvel movies look good but i will say deadpool movies never have looked great the mcu has definitely struggled in the later years with their overall quality and their output on the vfx and the CGI department, like, man, the CGI blood's horrible. It really lets down some of those violence. So we have the, the, the VFX and the villain stuff. We know that from Marvel. One of my biggest complaints about this movie is the Wolverine of it all. Yes, this movie is called Deadpool and Wolverine, but it feels like Wolverine is just like a featured player, not like an and. I wanted this movie to be a two-hander. Yes, they have a lot of scenes together, but this movie is more about Deadpool than it is about Wolverine. They tried to like slow it down and give us a Wolverine backstory and all that, and it just, it, it, it feels like one he really did this and you know i'm not one of those people i was actually one of those people of like i can't believe they're disrespecting the memory of logan this movie definitely says oh do you feel that way well here's a crazy wild intro of this movie that we're going to kind of make fun of that i was one of those people but i just felt like this movie wolverine other than being the wow he's here oh my goodness anyone could have been in here it could have been you know deadpool and ben affleck's 
Daredevil. It could have been Deadpool and, you know, Charles Xavier, Patrick Stewart. It could have been anyone. And that's where I just feel like it, it just didn't give me the, oh my god, Deadpool and Wolverine are together. When they have their fight scenes, fine, they're great. But any time that they're, these two aren't fighting each other, I just, I, I, I just didn't love Logan in this movie. Hugh Jackman's fine. The performance is okay. It just feels like he's an underwritten character just to be able to put over... Deadpool more. It's like, you know, if you're a wrestling fan, sometimes your favorite wrestler gets buried so they can put over the new star. You know, if you were a John Cena fan, John Cena would win the title over your favorite wrestler. And you're like, oh, this is what this felt like. I was like, I'm more of a Wolverine fan. So when Deadpool kept getting the shine, I'm like, I know it's this movie, but oh, let, let Wolverine shine a little bit more. All right, so we've talked about the good, the bad. Now let's talk about the meta-ness. Let's talk about all those juicy, wild cameos. When you have something like the TVA, a multiverse era that we're in with Marvel, you should expect cameos. And this movie has cameos. Did I expect more? Yes, good and bad. I expected more. I thought they were going to overstuff this movie. There is a lot of cameos, especially on the villain side. If you're a fan of the like X-Men Fox movies, you're going to notice a lot of those villains like, oh, he's here. Oh, he's here. Like, I think the trailers of some Pyro, who was a, you know, he was in the first uh, three X-Men movies in the, you know, The Last Stand. I actually think he's only in the first two. I don't really remember him in the first one. But yeah, we have Toad here. We have Tyler Mayne, Sabretooth. These are some of the little villains that are here that aren't, you know, fulfilling characters but they're like oh you're here a couple other villains that i don't really want to mention are here as well but for me the main like wow is some of the fox era characters they brought out i will mention two of them for sure that they have been in the marketing they have been talked about electra is in this movie jennifer gardner shows up she's kind of building a a team of other Fox people. That's all I'm going to say about that. We also have in the latest trailer, this was the shocking one that I can't believe they revealed, X-23 is in this movie. Daphne Keene, who was in Logan, is in this movie. They're both here. Yeah, they both do fine. You know what I mean? The cameos are definitely here. There's other cameos that aren't these two that I mentioned that legit made my jaw drop that I cannot believe was in this movie. There is, you know, Wolverine variants. There is this, this, and this. All of that's crazy. The only thing in the camera department that I thought was bad was all the Deadpools. There is a, a, a crap ton of Deadpools here. There's a big, you know, all the variants of Deadpool. We've seen the marketing. We have Ladypool. We have Dogpool. There's a kid pool. All of them are here. That's like the worst of the cameo thing, and mostly because it's just more Ryan Reynolds jokes. Ha ha ha. Yay, Ryan Reynolds is so funny. Deadpool jokes. By the time the Deadpool stuff happens, you're like, I, I've been so knocked over the head with every joke humanly possible. I can't possibly get into this even more. So that was my thing. The Deadpool stuff is my least favorite part of all of the cameos, all of the Easter eggy kind of stuff. But my goodness, there is two specific people in this movie that I was jaw dropped. I was shocked, shook, flabbergasted. You know, I could not believe they did what they did there. Even if it's as brief or even if it's as important to the plot as some of these cameos are, you're like, wow, you did that. So applause for those. I, I just kind of thought they were going to do more and I, I maybe credit for them for having some kind of thing, but I truly felt like the last 20 minutes of this movie was going to be Avengers Endgame, but with Marvel Fox characters. And I'm like, wow, wow, we brought out Nicholas Cage's thing, you know, I, I, I just, that, oh, spoiler, he's not in this movie. But yeah, you know what I thought? I thought everyone was going to be here, and I will give them credit for being a little bit more scaled back, a little bit more, um, let's not blow our load yet, maybe we'll do something like this for Secret Wars, but for the most part, the cameos worked, they did what they needed to do, it didn't make or break the movie, but there was some moments that actually did shock me. All right, everyone, that is it for my feelings of Deadpool and Wolverine. I gave you my overall review. I gave you some good, some bad, and we talked about all the cameos, the love letter to Fox and Marvel. What did you guys think of my review? What do you guys think of this movie? If you've had the chance to see it early, share your thoughts down below. Please do not spoil anything. If you want to know things, stay tuned for a spoiler review. I would definitely dive into, as a Fox Marvel person, why a lot of this definitely surprised me, why a lot of it made me happy, and why some of it made me a bit confused. So let, make sure you guys let me know if you want to see that. So subscribe, thumbs up, comment down below, and let's talk about Deadpool and Wolverine right down there.